We are recording. Hello, everyone. I'm Paul Vanuk from Recording Magazine. Welcome to our latest video review. Today, we're taking a look at the Fireface UCX2 from RME, which I also review in the November 2021 issue of Recording Magazine. Based in Heimhausen, Germany, RME started by building PCI-based digital interface cards back in 1996. Now, 25 years later, RME has expanded its line to include great-sounding digital audio converters and interfaces with some of the most rock-solid drivers in the business. The latest entry is the RME Fireface UCX2, a half-rack-sized audio interface that, through a combination of analog and digital wizardry, can accommodate 40 channels of high-fidelity audio over USB. Over the years, Recording Magazine has reviewed many of the changing faces of RME, from fire faces to baby faces. Darwin Gross introduced us to the original Fireface UCX back in the May 2012 issue, calling it a greatest hits collection of RME's best work. The new Fireface UCX2 retains the size and functionality of the original, but significantly updated, with more channels, better sonics, and a snazzy new layout. The UCX2 is housed in an RME standard half-rack enclosure. Thanks to the addition of a full-color LCD screen, the UCX2 has more in common with the RME ADI2 Pro FSR than the previous UCX model. The optional RME ARC USB remote is still available and works great with the UCX2. The display defaults to peak RMS metering for every channel, clocking info, and the main output level. A push-button stepped rotary encoder and four function buttons labeled Mic Gain, Record Play, Channel Mix, and Setup Reverb help menu dive and adjust parameters. These controls allow you to set up the digitally controlled microphone preamps and input channels, control the main and headphone output levels, adjust mix routings, determine clock settings, and alter the reverb, delay, and more. Most tweaks are made with just the push-button rotary encoder, which can be a little bit vintage iPod-esque, meaning it can be a little bit frustrating until you develop your muscle memory. Of course, you can also adjust most everything on the UCX2 in greater detail with the excellent RME Total Mix FX software app. Just like the original, the front of the UCX2 contains a pair of combo jacks for microphone and line input, two additional TRS line inputs, and a quarter-inch headphone output. Four additional quarter-inch balanced line inputs are located on the back along with six balanced line outputs. As a bonus, the DC-coupled outputs can accommodate control voltage and gate signals. This way, you can easily bridge the gap between virtual modular synths, DAWs, and their CV-equipped hardware counterparts. The UCX2 also contains traditional 5-pin MIDI in and out. For digital connections, there's a pair of ADAT optical ports, BNC word clock, and both stereo AES and SPDIF on an included multi-pin breakout cable. This gives the UCX2 a total of 20 inputs and 20 outputs, 16 analog and 24 digital. Finally, there is a USB port, a locking 18 volt DC socket for use with the included external power adapter, and a USB port labeled Durek. The RME Durek feature allows for direct standalone multi-track recording of each of the unit's channels to a FAT32 formatted thumb drive or external hard drive. Durek turns the UCX2 into an ultra-portable, full-scale, multi-track recording device that fits easily in a backpack and means you can leave your computer at home. It records its files to an interleave broadcast WAV file, which means that you will need to use RME's own multi-channel batch processor to convert the files for use in your DAW. You can learn more about it at RME's website, but all in all, the process is really painless. As a matter of fact, I'm recording all the audio for this video direct through Durek to the UCX2. The UCX2 can handle digital audio rates of up to 24192, and it now makes use of the RME Steady Clock FS technology, which ensures perfect jitter reduction and stable clocking both when clocked internally or externally. The Steady Clock FS technology achieves jitter reduction at levels that can be measured in femtoseconds. Now, I have zero clue what a femtosecond is, but according to RME, it's this number. 
Additionally, the UCX2 features onboard DSP, and we need to take a moment to talk about TotalMix. TotalMix FX was one of the very first software controlled DSP based mixing apps ever. It offers latency free, hardware mixer style routing and control over every available channel in the UCX2. This includes preamp functions like phantom power and levels, DSP based filters, EQ, and dynamics on every channel, plus internal reverb and effects. This processing can be used during tracking or mix down with internal loopback functions, but that's a bit beyond the scope of this video review. Lucky for us, RME has a Total Mix FX Beginner's Guide tutorial series on its homepage. The bottom line for an audio interface, of course, is how does it sound? Now, beyond listening to me talk to you for the last four or five minutes, to answer that question, we traveled to Chicago, where jazz singer Alyssa Allgood and jazz guitarist Kenny Reichert were kind enough to sing and play for us. Let's give a listen. <laughs> Than what I feel for you No greater love No heart so true There is no greater thrill Than what you bring to me No sweeter song Than what you sing to me You're the sweetest thing I have ever known And to think that you are mine alone there is no greater love in all the world, it's true. No greater love than what I feel for you. Alyssa and Kenny for singing and playing for us. That was awesome, guys. And it shows off just what a great sounding, powerful audio interface the UCX2 is for both studio and remote recording tasks. The two onboard preamps are on the transparent and neutral side and hold their own with many similar standalone models. The digital conversion is equally clean and transparent, and it's painless to add an ADAT equipped 8 channel preamp or expansion box, as well as your favorite stereo digital devices making the UCX2 an expandable powerhouse of a unit with a surprisingly small footprint. Often, when I hear about and review 8-channel analog interfaces that profess higher channel counts, like 40, I'm often skeptical that these expanded channel counts are anything more than market speak, or something that, at the end of the day, most of us will probably never use. Yet, on the UCX2, it all makes sense and comes together in a great-sounding, easy-to-use, highly versatile audio interface. 
and I love how simply it can do standalone multi-track recording. If you'd like to learn more about the ins and the outs of the RME UCX2, stop by rme-usa.com. Also, be sure to check out my review in the November 2021 issue of Recording Magazine. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give us the thumbs up below, and better yet, subscribe to Recording's YouTube page for additional video reviews, product comparisons, how-to videos, and more. Then, stop by recordingmag.com for the best in all things recording, where you can subscribe to our print publication, which is now in its 35th year. Also, be sure to check out the Recording Podcast on your favorite streaming service. I'm Paul Vanuk. We'll see you soon.